So I got my uh, start doing Indian weddings um, and then um, have segued. I still do a, a handful of weddings, so um, exclusively for the Indian clientele, um, but we've really segued into launching a platform that is an online platform that uh, helps couples plan weddings. Um, so really uh, giving them the right resources, all the vendor matching that they need, uh, templates to stay organized. So for everybody that's on here that actually does plan Indian weddings already, you know that Traditionally, it's let's call aunt or let's call cousin or whomever. Let's take pick the first plant, the first person we we hired as a vendor, whether they're a caterer or whether they're a DJ or a planner, and let's ask them what their favorites are. Um, so we try to compile all of that into an online platform that they can actually utilize. Um, and so uh, we are definitively looking for partners um, in the Indian uh, wedding world. Um, so as vendors uh, are out there, um, if you want to hit Viviana up uh, in the chat and uh, get more information, we'd love to give you some more information about us. Um, but our goal is really to simplify Indian weddings. Um, but to stay ahead of the curve, right? So the reason that uh, when we started talking about Prague um, or destination weddings just in general is that is definitively the way that um, our clientele is moving uh, in the direction of destination weddings. Not, you know, we, I, I feel like we've done every single venue in the country. Uh, we've probably done every wedding uh, venue in Cancun in <laughs> Uh, Cozumel and, you know, even in the Dominican Republic, right? So we are now definitively looking for new places. Um, and we want to be able to bring that to you and bring you the right resources so that you as uh, planners and uh, people that are in the industry aren't um, you know, sort of having to figure this all out yourself, right? So we want to be there to partner with you to figure all of those details out. Um, so we really brought you the best and the brightest of what Prague has to offer today um, to be on the call with us. Uh, we're going to start with Michaela um, Claudino. She has got extensive experience in the travel industry. She's been working in the Czech tourism um, uh, of North America for over 13 years, um, and she's currently the director and is responsible for all the marketing and promotion of the Czech Republic throughout the U.S. and Canada. Um, we are lucky to have her here to present with us. So without further ado, Michaela. Yes, good, um, good afternoon or good morning. Uh, I don't know which time zone you're in. Um, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to uh, be here today and talk about the Czech Republic. I'm Czech, I'm living in New York. I've been here for 20 years and for quite a number of years, I'm the head of the Czech tourism here. So I know quite a bit about the Czech Republic. I don't know so much about the Indian weddings, but we have partners here who will tell you about Indian weddings and I'm actually learning a lot myself. So. From me today, you will hear about the destination, uh, what is attractive about the destination, why to choose it, what might be the benefits uh, in comparison to maybe some Western European uh, countries. And as I mentioned, I'm based in New York, so any questions you might have later on, feel free to reach out to me. I know the presentation is called uh, Destination Weddings Prague, and we will be talking a lot about Prague, but we will be talking also about other parts of the Czech Republic. I will show you the highlights so you have an idea of what the country is all about. Um, so I always start with, um, you know, the name of the country. Many of you might have heard or might know Czechoslovakia, uh, but Czechoslovakia no longer exists. The country split in 1993, very peacefully into two countries, Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia. And Czech Republic can very often be referred to as Czechia as well. So if you're looking, you know, on Google Maps or, or online on, um, on the internet, you can look either for Czechia or Czech Republic. Um, Czech Republic is uh, really very conveniently located in uh, Central Europe. Um, I don't want to say Eastern Europe. Um, many people do say Eastern Europe, um, but for me, it's a reminiscent of the Cold War era. Um, as you can see, Prague is really in the middle of Europe and is actually further west than uh, Vienna, for instance. So just to, just to put it in perspective. And uh, Czech Republic is quite small. It's the size of South Carolina. Uh, we are members of the European Union, also part of the Schengen zone, so, uh, you know, very, very well connected in that sense. Um, we are um, using still the Czech currency, which is called the Czech crown. So although we're members of the European Union, we're not using the euro yet. And this might be good news for you because the dollar stretches a little bit further in the Czech Republic. Um, historically, very safe country. Uh, as I mentioned before, very well connected with the whole Europe. Um, there are five international air airports, the major airport being the Prague airport, um, but there's also excellent connections via Vienna, Berlin and Budapest. And Prague is actually within 
um, two hours from all the major European capitals by plane. So very easy to get to and um, to connect. Uh, Czech is the, um, is the national language, uh, but English is widely spoken. So um, no problem in terms of communicating. Um, I want to start with some good news. So um, Delta and United are planning to relaunch their direct flights uh, from New York to Prague in May 2022. So there will be direct flights, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> this is all planned. Uh, uh, but uh, other than that, you know, uh, great connections um, on, any, uh, on any major airline that flies to Europe. Uh, where um, is Czech Republic located? I mean, I mentioned it's in Central Europe, so we're bordering with Poland in the north, uh, with Germany on the west, um, Austria in the south, and Slovakia in the east. And you can see these are the distances um, to, you know, the European capitals nearby, uh, actually by uh, coach and by, uh, by plane. So you can see that for instance, from Prague to Berlin, it can take you less than an hour by, by plane or maybe four and a half hours on a train. So connecting, you know, with railway systems or, or planes, it's very easy. So Czech Republic, um, you know, it can be very easily combined with the neighboring destinations as well. It's a small country, but very diverse. Uh, so given the size of the country, uh, we have one of the highest density of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We have 16 of them. We have more than 2,000 castles and chateaus. We have um, spa towns, 30, 36 spa towns. We have national uh, parks um, and we have more than um, 40 historic towns. Um, and also for those who are into hiking, biking, we have more than 25,000 miles of you know, hiking, biking routes. This might be not appropriate for the wedding, but uh, you know, if you have clients who are, uh, who are into active vacation, there's also places um, you know, to visit. Uh, this is a beautiful image of Prague, and I'll talk about Prague in a little bit, but this is just to, you know, keep on your, um, you know, on your list the fact that Czech Republic is greatly accessible, it's great value for the money, it's very historical because Prague, unlike, um, you know, other European capitals, wasn't really damaged during the Second World War, so everything you see, all the buildings are original, pretty much, uh, which is very unique, very unique in that part of the world. And it's very cosmopolitan. I mean, you know, you, you see who's presenting today. I mean, you see my colleagues from, from uh, Compass who are, you know, living in Prague, uh, but still Prague is not, you know, super huge. It's 1.2 million people. So I think it feels very intimate and you will feel comfortable there. So these are just some of the images of Prague. Um, uh, Prague has the largest castle complex in the world. So it's the images that you see in the back. Um, that complex itself, you know, can take you easily one day to explore. And you will hear later on that you can rent some of the venues at the Prague Castle. So it's really impressive to have a wedding at the Prague Castle. Currently it's the seat of the president. And um, as I said, it's one of the largest castle complexes in the world. Um, Prague is also nicknamed the city of hundred spires. So as you can see on, um, the images I shared, um, you know, a lot of towers, um, spires, and you can actually uh, climb up a few of them and you can get a beautiful view of, of the city. So uh, the historical city center of Prague itself is actually UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, you know, you um, go see the old town square and you can take pictures there and you're like in a, in a movie, basically, you know, it's, it's stunning and you will see some images later on. Um, if you have a little bit more time and you decide to explore areas outside of Prague, you can do some day trips. And um, as I mentioned before, we have 16 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So this is one of them, uh, Kutná Hora, with this amazing cathedral of St. Barbara. It's less than an hour uh, from Prague. Uh, you can also visit some of the castles and chateaus. And I mentioned before, we have 2000 of them. And some of them can be actually used for weddings as wedding venues. So again, these are within an hour from Prague and um, the image you see in my, um, you know, the Zoom background is actually uh, one, uh, it's, it's an image from one of the castles here, the Karlstein Castle, which is the castle on the top left corner, which is one of the best preserved medieval castles in Central Europe. Uh, some of the castles are owned by royal, by, by the, you know, the royal families or the noble families, such as Nella Hoseves. So you might be able to meet the prince even when you visit and maybe he will welcome your wedding entourage there as well, if you pay the right money. <laughs> um, these are just some of the castles and chateaus that have been converted into five-star, you know, luxury hotels. So this is just for you to have an idea of what the country offers and how can it be combined, you know, with the city and you can also get a place which is um, really sort of like um, quiet and a little bit more intimate and, and private for the ceremony. 
Um, so if we are um, uh, talking about the Czech Republic, we can talk about two major regions, Bohemia, which is the eastern part, uh, I'm sorry, the western part, and Moravia, which is the eastern part. There are two main regions, and I'm not going to bore you with any more of geography, but you might refer, you know, might hear people referring, I'm from Bohemia, I'm from Moravia, so just for you to know that those are the two main regions in the country. Uh, so if we're talking and moving a little bit around the country, uh, South Bohemia is a very um, uh, popular destination for foreigners and for Americans in particular. Um, a town called Chesky Krumlov is actually the second most visited town after Prague. Uh, and it's about two and a half hours or maybe three almost from Prague. Um, it's again, UNESCO World Heritage Town, uh, one of the most romantic um, uh, towns in the Czech Republic. And um, it can be great for a honeymoon, for instance, you know, you can, um, for a wedding proposal or whatever, you know, the scenery is just amazing. And, um, you know, you can definitely uh, spend um, a couple of nights there in a luxury upscale hotel. Uh, the other area I want to talk about is the area that uh, is west of Prague, um, about um, two hours towards the border with Germany. And that area is called, the, um, you know, it's known for the spa towns. So I mentioned before that the Czech Republic has about 36 um, spa towns scattered all over the country. But the Western part of the Czech Republic, the so-called spa triangle is probably the most um, known uh, when it comes to spas. And um, actually the, uh, the spa triangle, which covers uh, three spa towns, Karlovy Vary, Karlsbad, Marianske Lázny, Marienbad, and Františko Vylázny, Franzensbad, um, has been recently added to the UNESCO as well. Uh, so those have, um, UNESCO sites are the sites that have special historical va uh, you know, value, can be altered, has to be uh, sort of maintained the way they are. Originally the Czech spas um, were medical spas. Uh, so those were spas where that sort of grew around the mineral springs that there's an abundance of in the Czech Republic. But as you can see, these are just gorgeous towns that have, you know, beautiful promenades. Um, they have uh, great shopping, great restaurants. And actually in Carlo Vivari, you can visit um, a glass factory, for instance, the, the famous Moser glass factory, um, you know, which provides and produces amazing, um, you know, um, glass products um, and exports all over the world. There's also a factory that, um, uh, that produces uh, the famous drink from that area area called Becherovka, which is like a, it's called the 13th um, spring of, of, of the spa. It's uh, similar to the Jägermeister. It's made out of herbs. So um, as I mentioned, these are uh, beautiful places to visit uh, maybe before the wedding or after the wedding to relax a little bit, um, uh, you know, upscale, uh, upscale hotels, upscale venues, and uh, again, really a little bit more intimate and romantic place to, to visit. And I have to mention in Western Bohemia also the city called Pilsen, which is the home of um, Czech beer. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about Czech food because you will hear more about catering options, etc. later on, but Czech beer is like a staple for the Czech Republic. You know, Czechs love their beer. Uh, we actually consume more beer per capita than the Germans. I have to make a comparison here. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes in some of the pubs, uh, the beer might be cheaper than a water that you would buy in a supermarket. I don't know if that's something to be proud of, but it's a fact and, you know, the beer is really good. And if you go, you have to try it. We even have such a thing as a beer spa. You can see it on the, uh, you know, left, uh, left bottom corner. So, um, again, a fun activity to do and uh, something very typical for the country. Um, and if you move uh, further east, um, so this would be maybe for somebody who wants to explore um, Austria afterwards, or maybe maybe Hungary, you can visit the Moravian region. So um, this Moravian region um, is about, you know, Brno is the, the largest city that's about two and a half hours on a highway from Prague, and it's only about an hour from Vienna if you drive the other way up. Again, beautiful castles and chateaus. This is one of the top places to visit. It's called the Lednice Valtice complex. I call it the Czech Versailles. So it's the largest, you know, one of the largest landscape areas in Europe. So it's two beautiful chateaus connected with amazing gardens. Um, so that itself can take you a day to explore. Also might be a wedding venue perhaps. Um, and in Brno, um, which is the largest city, we have also um, 
you know, not everything is old, um, uh, but we also have some great um, architectural gems. This is um, a villa by a famous architect, Lud Lud uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, one of the best preserved uh, functionalist villas or modernist villas in Europe, actually in the world. Um, so this is one of the gems in, in Brno. This is for somebody who's really into architecture and wants to explore. And um, as I mentioned before, also a lot of things to do in terms of biking and hiking. Um, I mentioned beer before, but Czech Republic also produces wine. Uh, and the wine region is the Moravian region that we are talking about now, um, specifically you know, near the border with, uh, with Austria because the climate is uh, somehow warmer and we have uh, very good white wines. Um, they're not um, you know, available that much here in the US because the production is quite small and most of it is consumed in the Czech Republic, but they won some international awards. So even you know, the wines are, are excellent. And if you wanna explore some of the natural you know, beauties, you can also um, explore one of the largest cave systems in Central Europe, uh, which is again near, near the city of Brno, um, about 50 minutes from, from the town. And as I mentioned before, this is all very close to Vienna. So this is about hour and a half drive from Vienna. So these were just some of the highlights. I was very brief. I didn't go really into details. I just wanted to give you an overview how diverse the Czech Republic is. Um, and you know, you can really visit it um, on a you know in a small amount of time. Uh, but you know, there there are many of many things to do. Uh, we are based in New York. These are our contacts. I believe those will be shared later on. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. We're here to help. Very small office, only two of us, but pretty hands-on. Uh, but thanks to our partners, we're able to reach out you know, to larger audiences um, and we work with partners in the Czech Republic in, in the US. Um, so now I would like to ask my colleague from, from Prague, uh, Marco Brumann, who's the managing um, director of Compass to tell you about his company and how can they help you to you know, organize tours in the whole Central Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michaela, for a fantastic presentation, as always, by Czech Tourism. Uh, I will just very shortly uh, present uh, our company as well. Uh, we were basically founded in uh, 19... 51, uh, which, uh, so last year we were actually celebrating uh, 70 years of existence uh, as a headquarters and 30 years of existence in Czech Republic. We do everything from leisure groups, individuals, and of course also to the mice, same like high-end uh, and ultra-high-end uh, ultra uh, tourism. Uh, later on, we will present you also uh, all our desti destinations where we have our own offices with local uh, staff in Central and Eastern Europe. Otherwise, outside of Slovenia, we have more than 20 offices. Uh, in Central Eastern Europe, we have an office in uh, Poland, in Warsaw, in uh, Czech Republic, in Prague. And then from Prague, we are covering as well Slovakia. We have as well in Vienna, in Austria, uh, and uh, Budapest, Hungary. Plus, we have an office uh, in Italy, in Venice. Uh, here you will see some of our products, which we have, but I will now also focus a little bit more on what we did in uh, Prague. For example, we were handling a Uriada event in 2016 and 18 in Prague and 2019 in Berlin. This is a event up to 1,500 people, where we handled everything from accommodation transfer, all additional services. For example, FIBA basketball national teams, where we handle sponsors, journalists, and uh, uh, all the fans. Cheerleading AO championship 2017 in Prague. This event was more than 3,000 people. And then uh, very, let's say, focused, uh, uh, focused things like uh, Security Bank uh, FVD from Filipinos, where there were 2000, uh, 250 parks. It was an incentive where we handled everything and things like that. That would be about Czech Republic, uh, about Compass in Prague. Now I will ask uh, Ashwini, my colleague. Uh, she's responsible for. Uh, let's say high-end and ultra-high-end uh, clientele in our office to present uh, 
uh, Prague. Prague has hosted Indian weddings on and off since 2008. Uh, but lately, in the past few years, it is gaining more and more popularity because, of course, you know, now people want to explore more destinations, travel more, of course, barring uh, COVID time. Uh, and also another reason for the popularity, the increasing popularity of Prague has been, you know, because a lot of super hit Bollywood movies have been uh, shot in Prague. So that's another reason for the increasing popularity. Um, now, uh, why Prague? Uh, Prague has some very strong factors working in its favor, which makes it an ideal option for destination weddings and celebrations of, you know, various range and various kind of, uh, you know, uh, the number of guests and the nature of celebration. Uh, so yeah, so the first is the growing um, uh, the growing local Indian community. So in the past decade or so, the local Indian community has grown, uh, you know, in several uh, uh, really rapidly because of which a lot of Indian and South Indian grocery stores, online supermarkets are are you know exist nowadays. Uh, this can be uh, especially very important in case your guests are here and they you know forget something very specific Indian to bring. So we can, you know, uh, we can source it locally. Uh, then again, a huge number of Indian and South Asian restaurants. Again, some of these restaurants are very good and also cater to some, you know, wedding uh, weddings and celebrations. Uh, then very Indian and South Asian specific beauty and salon services. You know, very Indian uh, ex Indian services that clients expect, like threading or applying mehendi, helping with draping the sari, the lehenga. You know, so such kind of services is totally possible. Uh, then again, a uh, very good uh, Asian, Indian, South Asian, overall international cuisine, be it vegetarian, vegan, Jain, all these kind of, you know, uh, varieties can be uh, catered to. In fact, uh, the catering company, which is responsible for the for one of the largest congresses, uh, which is in Prague, one of the largest congresses of Europe, is owned by an Indian. And this company also has some very good fine dining, Czech, Indian, international fusion kind of restaurants. So again, you know, so in terms of food, you're taken care of. Then again, the Indian community is uh, very close-knit, very helpful, but at the same time, uh, we, ge uh, we gel and blend very well with uh, the local Czechs and other expat communities. And very important to note is that generally Czechs are, are fascinated are, and are in great appreciation of the Indian and the South Asian culture. Uh, next, um, when it comes to vendors, um, the vendors are able to customize uh, the design of the mandap, the design of the desk, of the venue, all the setup as as per client needs. So they are not restricted in terms of you know just only few options. Then again, like Michaela said, uh, Prague is in the center of Europe. It's very well connected by air, uh, road, and uh, railways. So just in case a couple uh, wants to pick a vendor of their own choice, and you know maybe they they want maybe a DJ to fly in from Dubai or Germany. They want a priest who is from UK. So that is not at all uh, you know a problem to bring them to or fly them to Prague. Uh, then most importantly, like Michaela again said, uh, English is widely spoken here. So communication is not an issue. Tourism is one of the biggest industries of Prague. On top of that, UK and USA are our top source markets. So, you know, of course, English is very widely spoken and communication and just, you know, moving around and travel within, within the Czech Republic where you're coming in contact with people. It's, uh, you know, communication is not a problem. Uh, then coming uh, to excellent accommodation options. Now again, Prague had Prague, and in the vicinity of Prague, there is a wide range of accommodation options, hotel options available. There are, um, you know, some beautiful 400-year-old palaces, 13th, 14th century monasteries, which are converted into uh, five-star deluxe luxury hotels. So, you know, like you can see a few of them on the screen. So these hotels, of course, you can buy out totally and do all the events and ceremonies here. Or you can, you know, host your guests here and do the events, uh, you know, outside the hotel. Then again, uh, Prague is home to a very good mix of uh, local and international standards um, hotels. 
and you know there are hotels which have more than 700 rooms also so uh, so that way big uh, group of guests can be hosted and uh, pre covid and i'm sure that will you know happen even once the situation improves prague hosts some uh, a very big mice and conference events every year so the hotels are well equipped in terms of facilities and the staff know how to um, how to handle and how to cater to uh, guests of uh, you know different nationalities and of course barring uh, these big hotels there are also some very a good mix of again international and local hotels uh, which can you know accommodate uh, smaller groups as well now uh, lately especially in the past 3 uh, to 5 years i i specifically have noticed that there is a lot of uh, indian and south asian couples are uh, choosing prague for some very intimate events you know like proposals and uh, you know photo shoots and why not proposal because you know and why not photo shoot photo shoots because anywhere you uh, just point your camera in prague and it is a picture perfect shot so that way prague is a lovely uh, option for such kind of proposals of course you can make it more special uh, if budget permits like uh you know proposals on hot air balloons or proposals with some uh, musicians um hosting a uh, a beautiful romantic dinner with uh, 500 candles or some beautiful flower arrangement so all of that is possible and like i said you know even pre wedding photo shoots um photo shoots during the honeymoons these are also increasingly popular and uh, especially uh, please note that uh, prague has very good creative professionals in terms of photographers and videographers who who also speak english so of course when you hire local you know you're is saving a lot on cost but the quality and and their work is just you know top notch of international standards and of course there are a lot of venues like you know like michela mentioned outside prague which are just perfect and very romantic uh, for such kind of events now uh, just before the wedding if if you know the groom and his guys want to come for a boys trip of course you know prague is amazing for a party it is a, uh, it is home to uh, it is arguably the beer capital of the world it is home to uh, legendary brands like pilsen and budweiser but uh, for those who are looking for other unique options uh, we highly recommend something like a self drive a uh, scenic uh, trip you know in the check highlands or south moravian wine region in a, a super super luxury cars like ferrari lamborghini or muscle cars like you know ford mustang or they can actually uh, do medieval games competition in medieval uh, uh, chateau hotels or they can take a day, a day trip outside prague to get some off road action like uh, dirt biking tank rides uh, shooting range etc and of course there is always uh, you know even golf resorts are are, are an option and when it comes to ladies uh, prague is not uh, far behind at all prague is great for shopping uh, like michela mentioned it also has some great uh, hiking and you know active uh, uh, active adventure options in case you know somebody is into that and of course they can go to the karlovy vary region for an amazing relaxing spa uh, ladies trip or if uh, if somebody is interested in wine they can visit the south moravian wine region visit so many vineyards even if somebody up for it they can experience working in a vineyard for few hours or in a day so that way there are a lot of options even for a ladies trip now um, of course you know prague has prague and the vicinity of prague has a variety of venues uh, for any kind of event be it uh, you know like uh, special dinners um, sangeet mehndi haldi a uh, reception the actual wedding ceremony uh, now uh, coming to castles like michela said there's more than 2000 uh, castles and chateaus in uh, czech republic and there is actually you a uh, couple has an opportunity to get married in prague castle prague castle is the uh, largest castle complex in the world it's a unesco world heritage site to just put things into perspective in the construction of prague castle started in 8th century so that is the level of preservation prague sees you know like from medieval times and inside prague castle complex there are some fantastic venues where you can host big celebrations you know like this is the spanish hall or there are some beautiful vineyards uh, close to prague castle 
or there are also one or two options a little far from uh, the center of Prague, but still the Vinaya is very beautiful with restaurant option or, you know, outside catering option is also there. Then again, you know, uh, uh, palaces, uh, this is the, the photo of Lopkovich Palace, which is again in Prague complex. And I feel the balcony of Lopkovich Palace has one of the best views of Prague. So, you know, if I imagine maybe like a nice cocktails evening, like a sundowner followed by a nice uh, dinner in one of those indoor venues. Then again, uh, Prague is one of the greenest uh, cities in Europe. So it is home to some beautiful royal gardens and parks, again, which are quite popular, you know, for these kind of celebrations and events. Um, then, uh, then there are some uh, interesting venues. For example, this is Jufkin Palace, which has a combination of both indoor and outdoor venues. So you can have all the ceremonies at one place itself. For example, Jofen Palace is located right on Vltava River with stunning views of, you know, Charles Bridge and Prague Castle. Uh, but it is actually located on an island of its own. So even though you are very much in Prague city center, you still have this, uh, you know, feeling of exclusivity and privacy. So, so there are such venues also available. Uh, then, of course, uh, when it comes to Chateau, this is uh, example. Uh, this is one example. This is Sh Troya Chateau, dating back to 1600s. Uh, this uh, was the location of one of the Indian weddings of an Indian Ar American couple in 2019. And it has a very nice outdoor venue where you can, you know, um, have really nice uh, mandap and other kind of uh, uh, setups. And it can host really big uh, uh, group of uh, big group of guests. Then um, in around 19th century, um, a very important buildings were commissioned uh, to promote art and culture in Europe. Uh, for example, Rudolf Inum, which is like the home of uh, all these orchestras and, you know, concerts. There is uh, the municipal house, which is again right in the city center. Or an example like this that you can see on the screen. This is National House Vinoradi, uh, which was again, uh, you know, built in 19th century. Has amazing uh, venues like concert halls and banquet uh, sp uh, spaces. In fact, I know of a uh, few Indian couples which have chosen this uh, venue for their reception. So it's a nice, uh, uh, you know, option for reception and maybe Sangeet. Then, of course, then there are some unique venues like, you know, the boats or fine dining restaurants, which can, uh, you know, host for like nice small uh, events like Mehendi or maybe like a welcome dinner of one third of the family or, you know, something of those sort. And uh, also uh, some iconic uh, brands uh, have their flagship stores, which are beautiful and they usually open the doors for some nice uh, events. Uh, for example, this is Preciosa Crystal uh, flagship store, which is iconic, legendary Czech brand. Uh, then, then there are options, uh, you know, slightly more modern options, which are very much, uh, you know, housed in historical buildings in the city center. And they have multiple, uh, multiple spaces in the same venue. So they have a terrace, um, a terrace restaurant, they have a banquet space and they have a club. So, you know, a lot of multiple venues, a uh, lot of multiple ceremonies, you can do it. Or like, you know, you can just have a big party where, you know, the young generation can maybe party in the club and the others can enjoy like a nice dinner or, you know, in, other, in, the, in the other spaces. Now coming to outside of Prague, in a matter of uh, less than 30 minutes drive, there are some very beautiful chateaus and other historical venue options available, which again can be great for, uh, you know, various ceremonies. For example, this is Nella Hosevest Castle. Again, it dates back to 1600s. Uh, it uh, belongs to um, um, an aristocratic uh, noble family called uh, Lukovich. And the royal family is very much present in Prague. And like Michaela said, maybe, you know, the prince can be part of your wedding too if the price is right. Uh, uh, but uh, this chateau does not have hotel rooms. So maybe the day event can be here, but the uh, guests will have to be accommodated in Prague. But the distance is too low. So it's, you know, too less. So it's not a problem. 
or um, there are some very good uh, luxury boutique hotels um, so you know a 13th uh, 13th century baroque chateaus or like for example this one this is a rural manor belonging to an aristocratic family so these kind of properties have been converted into luxury boutique properties which are perfect for intimate weddings of anywhere you know maybe 50 to 120 guests so even there are several such uh, options from uh, you know prague in the vicinity of prague uh, so like I was saying, you know, Prague and the vicinity of Prague has so many options for any kind of event uh, that your clients have, be it mehendi, be it cocktails, san sangeet, uh, the actual wedding ceremony. So, you know, Prague that way uh, can, you know, accommodate and, uh, you know, meet any of the desires of your clients. So thank you for the attention. I hope uh, we as a group here have been able to inspire to consider Prague and Czech Republic for your next event, for your client's celebration next event. Uh, now next in line is our very good partner Bhargavi from Soul Trips. She's popularly known as B in the US. Um, we are very happy and proud to partner with somebody like B. B comes with a wealth of experience, not only in, uh, in India and also in US. And she specializes in such kind of experiential trips, especially focusing on multi-generation family events and uh, celebrations. So yeah, over to you, B. Thank you, Ashwini and uh, Michaela for the wonderful presentation and selling Prague to us. I think the images are enough for anyone to fall in love with Czech Republic. And I would say Czech Republic, not just Prague, uh, because going beyond is what Soul Trips um, is uh, the main ethos of the company. So my name is Bhargavi, as Ashwini mentioned, uh, my friends and industry colleagues call me B. I am the founder of Soul Trips. Uh, Soul Trips was founded in 2004 uh, back home in Mumbai. Um, we opened the US office in February of 2020. And of course, the, then the world just shut down on all of us. Uh, but it's, it's, it's been okay. Um, uh, though we've been here uh, barely, uh, I would say, two years now, we've already done 150 passengers. We did a wonderful ladies group uh, in Dubai at the Nikki Beach uh, for a party event. Um, to give you a little bit as to how I come into this whole arrangement of promoting Czech Republic as a wedding destination, uh, Soul Trips uh, believes in promoting destinations that they thoroughly research, uh, inspect, uh, have been to. So all the destinations that we promote in Europe, France, Italy, Spain, Greece, we ensure we go there at least once a year uh, to see what's new. Besides that, we have wonderful rapport with all our partners in these destinations and we pick the best of the lot. Compass is one of the biggest names in, in their region. Um, and um, the tourism boards, we work very closely with the tourism boards because like it or not, I mean, they are the best source uh, to give you what's happening in the country. Um, uh, they have a lot of connections and we build rapport and they eventually become our friends. Um, back home also, we used to work with wedding planners. Now, how can I help you? As I mentioned, we are destination specialists. So uh, when you have a bride and groom who want uh, and are looking for destinations beyond US and North America or looking at Europe, uh, I can jump in and help you out. Uh, the way I work is I become your partner, uh, almost as a representative of your company. And together we ensure that we seal the deal, which is a win-win for all of us here on the Zoom call. Um, so uh, ping me. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one with all you people in the wedding industry. And don't think Europe is frightfully expensive. Yes, get out of the mind block of just France, London, Italy, Spain. Um, get out of the tourist rut. There are some magnificent gems in Europe, like the Czech Republic, who are more than welcoming guests. 
have done Indian weddings. So your clients are not going to be the guinea pigs. They've been there. They've done that. They have the infrastructure. Uh, it's just up to you guys now to present it as, a, as an option. Because uh, honestly, the responsibility now lies on your shoulders because you you guys, you know, are the ones who, who have the clientele. And uh, we are just the means to help you along the journey of making that event very successful. Um, I would like now for all of us to just brainstorm as to how we can take this forward. If you all have any questions, uh, please, uh, you all are welcome to ask any one of us. Thank you, B. Um, yeah, so I know that we've got a number of wedding planners. Um, Therese, uh, I'm going to bank that you will do one of these here very quickly. So um, if any of you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out and ask um, if we haven't answered um, anything. I know that probably one of the questions that's probably top of mind is um, somewhere in lines of sort of uh, costing. Um, and so I know that it's it's top of mind for, you know, any of us that are planners that, that you know, present this to clients. Um, so um, Ashwini, you want to talk a little bit about sort of, you know, hotel comparisons and sort of that sort of level of understanding so that people have a little bit of an understanding of, of cost um, in, in Prague versus, you know, London or the U.S.? Of course, uh, because, you know, I won't, I've, we have never organized a wedding in London or US, so it is difficult for me to say, yeah. but if you're uh, talking about Prague, uh, then maybe a three-day uh, decent wedding, you know, with all these uh, various events and components um, and uh, a decent budget for about 100 people, it can start like anywhere around uh, 50,000 euros. So I think so that is a good budget to start with, um, you know, and like, for example, you have seen, uh, everybody has seen the kind of, uh, you know, photo, the photos of the weddings that took place. So you can, so that is the kind of budget that we can work with to have like a nice, uh, you know, wedding. But of course, sky is the limit. There's always more lavish luxury, you know, that, that, that can be done. So oh, I hope what, that, what are you including in that? Are you including the venue space only or are you including other resources? Uh, so um, I would say, you know, um, so the two components I would say is the wedding planning bit. That is like when you hire catering, design, setup, uh, and then the hotel and then, you know, uh, uh, like hotels, transport, that's the other bit. So I guess together somewhere, um, maybe, you know, around 50,000 euros is something that, you know, we can work with. Uh, maybe to give a comparison, uh, uh, Marco, please correct me if I'm wrong, a good uh, five-star hotel here in, uh, you know, not in, like, like maybe a yeah, shoulder. In the season would be about, let's say, a maximum 300 euros, depending how full Prague is. And if we are talking about the five-star deluxe hotels, it's let's yeah. say max, maximum 500 euros yeah. uh, but i have a couple are, other questions but this is for example like mandarin oriental or something which normally is in out of season in paris you know the, the cost like that or in london yeah. i have a couple questions uh tell me what is your prime season where is it the high peak season and the weather uh do we have weather concerns <laughs> The season, uh, the season is from, let's say, mid of, uh, uh, from normal, before the COVID, the season was from uh, April till mid of June, then uh, mid of June till September, uh, it's, uh, let's say, some kind of mid season, and then September, October is again high season. Uh, and best, let's say, the best planning for such things is of course summer. Summer and it can go, let's say, depending on of the weather and everything, let's say up till end of September, maybe mid of October. 
Um, so, Therese, to that question, I, so when Marco talks about that, what he's referring to is that peak season, that that sort of shoulder season is what he's referred to, right? So that's 20 to 30 percent less than some of those price points that he had yes. rattled off, right? So, uh, which is great for us Houstonians because that sucks uh, in terms of weather here in, in town. So, uh, right. prime time for, for, for Houstonians to be um, overseas. So, um, yeah, did you have any other questions, Therese? Yeah, a couple more questions. Do the hotels generally provide the Indian food or do we need to bring in our outside caterers from the restaurants, the many restaurants that you have there? Um, the hotels normally do not provide like Indian food. They do have Asian corners in all good five-star hotels and uh, something like that for the breakfast, for example, but concretely Indian food. There, before the COVID, there was one hotel, but this hotel is not really, let's say, for such kind of groups that they had a, a Indian chef, uh, uh, chef um, cuisine, and they also had a restaurant and everything. But of course, it can be kept. I mean, yes. this is a request. Yeah. If it's if it's a big group, you know, taking say half of the hotel or full full hotel, then we know for a fact that then those hotels work with some very good Indian catering companies. Yeah, like for example, uh, when the president was here, he was staying at the Four Seasons, but the catering was all Indian by a very good Indian company. So mm -hmm. it all depends, you know, when we get a query post COVID, I'm, sh I'm sure we can work out a solution, but yeah, I, yeah, we can, so. Excellent. I have one more question. Do any of the hotels or any of the venues shut down like they do in Italy uh, for holidays? You know, Italy has, you just breathe and you have a holiday or <laughs> even they close down for the season. <laughs> yes. I, do yes. I do, I do a lot of international weddings oh, and yeah, so I always am faced with them being closed down or whatever. Right. No, no, that's not, in, uh, not the case in Prague and not the case in Czech Republic. Good. Yeah. No. Well, I'd except, like to do something. Except I'd like now to do, during the COVID. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do Prague because I'm my family's from Poland. So you're nice and close and I'd love to, I'm 100% Polish. Wow. So it would be a lovely trip to take. Um, please let us know if there are any fam trips ever to to Prague or to the Czech, I'd be very interested to bring that information back to my clients. I am getting interest in Prague right now and I attend uh, DWP and they are a big proponent of Prague as well. Oh, okay. great. Great to know. Yeah, That's we'll it. That, yeah, we'll definitely keep you on the list for, for the fan trips and I'm planning to do quite a few this year if everything goes okay. well. Okay, very good. Um, thanks. Uh, Samia, Jatin, do you, either of you guys have any other questions that we didn't hit on? Uh, I think I'm good. Okay, perfect. I, I like okay. what I see. I just got to, you know, convince the uh, clients to switch it off from uh, the uh, Cancun, the Arubas, and the oh, Jamaica. please. Please, please, please. <laughs> you know, when Gina and me, we started talking and I, I joined Daisy Veds as a vendor, my first thing was, why are the North Americans so stuck up with, you know, just these beach destinations? And one of the things which came across was because when you say Europe, the, the first perception is, oh my God, it's going to be so expensive. Yes. Um, and uh, we pick check is, is just to bust that myth that it, it's not that expensive. You just have to open your minds. And as I mentioned, it's up to you guys to propose uh, different destinations and, and we can work around the budget. And let's just get this started and get the couples thinking about beyond these destinations. You know, I think the biggest challenge is not the cost involved. It's the amount of time that our guests have to take off work. Um, I think that is the biggest challenge. I know we, we face this on a regular basis and most of the time they, they're wanting just their guests to take off one day or two days. But what I've been proposing and I'm doing Lake Como, I'm doing Puerto Rico, um, Bali. And what we're proposing is that most of our clients, guests take a holiday anyhow. So why not make it a holiday tied to a wedding? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that Ashwini did a great job in presenting so much more of what the country or the city has to offer, right? So as an entire country, so that, um, so Teresa, when you do present it to clients, right, they've got the ability to talk to mom and dad um, and show them that there is just so much more that they can do because they don't have to stay in the Czech Republic, right? Like they could go to Germany, they could go to Poland um, and then compass it all together so that, you know, uh, you spend, you know, a, a, you know, maybe a week in the Czech Republic and then a few days in the other cities uh, or the other countries and so that it becomes truly um, a nice vacation, um, which I think that everybody is really itching to do at this point, right? With everything that's going on with COVID, I think that that's been sort of a huge um, influx in why we want to do more destination weddings. Um, so yeah. So I just have one more question. Sure. Sorry, I don't want to take up too much time because I know we're limited, but um, in comparison to like Scotland, Switzerland, uh, Portugal, price comparison wise, are you below those? They are, so in the comparisons that I have done in terms of those the the the, the places that you've rattled off, um, the Czech Republic does come in um, price pointed either at or below those other options, right? So um, when we're talking about comparing um, hotel spaces. Uh, ease of getting to the, the the location specifically, and then transport within, right? So um, those are all um, those are all either at or below what you just what the the options that you threw out, and then. The other big thing is that if you're talking about um, food and what have you, right, that starts to get very specific, right? So, um, you know, some of those places are, um, you know, the options that you have in the Czech Republic um, versus what you have in other places, it, it really is going to depend on what the clients um, are going to want and what, they, what their specific needs are. Thank you so much. And, you know, what I have been very impressed with this presentation so far is that, you um, it has so many of our needs because when I present destination options to our client, it's based on, can we really do an Indian wedding successfully there? And it sounds like Prague has everything that we need. So thank you so much for putting this together. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Um, so I know that we're uh, running up on that noon time frame um, uh, here in Texas. So uh, we want to be mindful of everybody's time. Um, does anybody else have any other questions that we can answer? There was one question, um, how many days would be ideal for, um, you know, couples and their families and friends to kind of set aside for a successful event and have enough days to do, you know, have a good experience in Prague? In terms of the wedding uh, or like, or for holiday? For the wedding specifically, but maybe a few days before and after to enjoy the city and that type thing. Well, if I just start with just the holiday experience, um, it's a very common question. It's like, how many days do you recommend? So I always say at least three days in Prague, in the city of Prague, at least three days just to see the highlight. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. really, um, and jump in, Ashwini and Marco, and then depending, you know, what do you want to see? So um, you can add on, I would say what's been very popular is like self-drive or luxury high-end, you know, the drive um, with, the, with the, you know, driver. So I think eight to 10 days, you should be able to see the highlights of the destination. But if you just have, let's say, you know, two extra days, go to a spa town, do a weekend after the, you know, if you have uh, one extra day or two, go down to South Bohemia. If you want to connect it with, let's say, Austria, as I, as I showed you, you know, you go through Moravia, which is the eastern part of the country. Okay, two, three more days, easy. So I think, I think for Prague, only three days, a minimum, and that up to, I think, eight to 10 days to see the highlights. The way and I look at it, majority, Yeah, majority of the things can be also seen that you, you are accommodated in Prague and then you go out. But if you want to really go into the details, like Michaela said, then of course, if you want to get to know the... I don't know, spas, then you have to stay there minimum two nights, you know. If you want to see South Moravia, to taste the wine tour, to see different things, then of course it's good to be there at least two, three days, and then you can continue yeah. on to Vienna, you know. And then you can do the circle around uh, from uh, from Vienna to Salzburg, again, then Chiski Krumlov, and you come slowly back to Prague, you know. So, yeah, I would say up to 10 days, you can have a very full program and very nice uh, experience 
to and you have something to do in Czech Republic. Is it easy to drive there? Yes, yes, it's easy. So we could rent a car and car rental allows you to go from region to region? Of course, of course. That's but of course we also can arrange all kinds of uh, other transports, so it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's one more question about what's the best season to visit? Maybe missing the tourist spike and but still get great weather? Um, I mean, regarding the weather itself, uh, especially if we want to do outside venues, which uh, in many cases for Indian weddings would be, let's say, uh, uh, good to do also outside, is I would say um, from mid of June till, let's say, end of August. Uh, also more affordable and everything. Because we also have to know that this is the season when Europe itself is not traveling a lot uh, between the cities itself because everybody goes to the, to the sea side uh, uh, and it's not so crowded, you know. Uh, again, September, October, April, May, these are months where also Czechs are getting married, you know, and everything. So certain things have to be planned then very well in advance, you know, that yeah. you get all the bookings and everything. Because for some really, let's say, very nice places, uh, also between the checks, you, you know, sometimes you have to plan uh, one year, one year and a half in advance to, to book the place. You know? But these are not the places we were talking here. <laughs> Um, well, good. I'm glad um, for all of you guys. We will uh, we'll send up a, a, a wrap up email just so that you guys have all the contact information and uh, what you need uh, in terms of getting in touch with uh, all the teams represented here. And then um, again, look out for the next one. Uh, we're super excited. Uh, not that the U.S. is a, an amazing place to have weddings, but uh, we just want to open our, our our world a little bit and and get some new options out there for for our clients. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us today. Okay.